1970 was a pivotal year for Pontiac as it arguably represents the year in which Pontiac Divisional Management started rotating the brand away from performance and more toward luxury. Now, one may ask, why in the world would Pontiac do this after having such success in the 1960s selling performance-oriented vehicles like GTOs and Firebirds and even high-performance full-size vehicles like 2 Plus 2s? Well, by this point, it was known that increasing insurance regulations and premium payments were going to be hitting muscle car owners. And it was also known that emission standards were going to be heightened significantly versus previous levels. Both of these items portended a reduction in horsepower that was necessary in order to continue achieving high levels of sales, or so Pontiac Division leadership thought. And as a result, the division began rotating into, as I mentioned, more luxurious offerings. It's for this reason that in the U.S., Pontiac began offering a new upper-end luxury vehicle that displaced the Vaudeville in the lineup, and that was the Granville, whose name was a blend of the Grand Prix and the Bonneville. For 1970, however, the full-size Pontiac lineup, if you exclude the Grand Prix, consisted of the Bonneville at the upper end of the lineup, the Executive, which was one down from the Bonneville, and the mid-priced full-size Pontiac, and the Catalina, which was the low-priced entry-level Pontiac. However, what some may not know is that while this was the U.S. Pontiac offering for full-size vehicles, across the border in Canada and in a number of countries internationally, Pontiac had a different lineup. The vehicles had the same bodies as they did in the United States, but the chassis and powertrains underneath them were based on Chevrolets. This was done largely to import regulations in Canada that forbid significant amounts of non-domestic content on the vehicles absent the manufacturers paying hefty import duties and tariffs. As a result, GM decided to employ a number of Chevy components, including frames and chassis components, as well as engines and transmissions and drivetrains, in order to get economies of scale and production costs that would be in line with the market. For example, many of the components on these Pontiacs had to be sourced from local suppliers because of the import duties and regulations that I just mentioned. So it was much easier to source one, as an example, set of brake systems across Chevrolet and Pontiac versus sourcing two different types of brakes or suspension systems or components for various engines, as an example, than to do it twice effectively, especially given that Canadian volumes were about one-tenth that of American volumes, largely because the Canadian population has tended to range around 10% of the U.S. population. As a result, Pontiac in Canada had a completely different lineup offered for sale in the event a buyer wanted it. These vehicles had Pontiac bodies, but had Chevrolet chassis underneath and engines and drivetrains, and were sold for cheaper prices than the U.S.-based Pontiacs. The lineup from the full-size vehicle standpoint consisted of the Parisian at the upper end and the most expensive of these models. One down from that, or the midline, was the Laurentian. And then the cheapest entry-level full-size Pontiac in Canada was the Strato Chief. Now, not only did these vehicles employ Chevrolet engines under hood, but they also tended to have smaller engines under hood as standard equipment, in part because fuel prices in Canada were more elevated than they were in the United States back then, and that remains true even today. As a result, the Strato Chief and the Laurentian may do with a standard 250 cubic inch inline six-cylinder engine making 155 horsepower in base form. I can't imagine how slow that is, probably 16, 17, maybe even 18 seconds, 0 to 60, but that was indeed the standard engine in those vehicles, and it came standard with a 3.08 to 1 rear end. Now, if you got the Parisian, you were lucky, and you got a Chevrolet 350 cubic inch two-barrel V8. Again, that was a Chevy V8 engine, not the Pontiac 350 under hood, and that gave you a little bit more oomph. More specifically, that standard 350 cubic inch V8 in the Parisienne made 250 gross horsepower. It was a regular fuel engine, and there was an optional Pontiac 350 cubic inch four-barrel V8, a premium fuel 350 that made 300 horsepower. Now, this is where this 1970 dark green, and I can't quite tell if it's verdoro green or pepper green in the pictures, but a dark green Pontiac Laurentian comes into play. 
it may look like it's your standard run-of-the-mill two-door Pontiac on the outside and a little bit frumpy, not much chrome trim or stainless trim because, as mentioned, this was the Laurentian and not the Parisienne. So it was just the mid-priced Pontiac in the overall lineup. But lurking under hood in this Laurentian is an extremely special engine, and that is an LS4 454 cubic inch V8 making 345 gross horsepower. Yes, I said that right. A big block Chevrolet resides underneath the hood of this dark green 1970 Pontiac Laurentian. Now, in the U.S., you could get the LS4 in full-size Chevrolets as well. In fact, I own a 1970 Caprice with the LS4 engine that I actually bought from Canada. And while full-size big block Chevrolets were quite rare in the U.S., even during this time period, they were even more rare in Canada because, as I said, fuel prices were quite high. In other words, this dark green Laurentian is one rare bird. Now, there was one V8 that you could get that was above the 345 horsepower LS4 V8. That was a 390 horsepower 454 cubic inch big block Chevrolet. But that was even more rare than this LS4 version. And I haven't honestly seen one of those in the flesh in terms of Canadian Pontiacs. I have seen a 1970 Caprice with a 390 horsepower 454 under hood but again yet to see one in canadian pontiac form another interesting thing about this 1970 laurentian is clearly the owner was not in for many frills and you can imagine that laurentian owners weren't necessarily big into power windows and power locks this after all was really a value car if you don't know pontiac was really the mainstream brand in canada not chevrolet pontiac outsold chevrolet all the way until Pontiac was sunset as a brand for General Motors in Canada. And that's really just because of the dealer network and how the dealer network grew up there. As a result, Canadian Pontiacs were really more value-conscious cars than U.S.-based Pontiacs that pushed more upmarket. And you could think of a Canadian-based Pontiac as maybe very, very slightly above a Chevrolet, but not really all that much. Canadians would have said during this time that a Chevrolet was just a box on four wheels and really didn't have much brand equity. So consequently, this Laurentian doesn't have many frills, and it doesn't even have power steering in a full-size Pontiac. I don't necessarily want to know what type of arm strength it takes to move that vehicle around at parking lot speeds, but I guess there probably wasn't much parallel parking in Canada in that time, especially if you lived in a rural part of the country. Now, in addition to the lack of frills and the crank windows that you can see here in this picture, Notice the accelerator and the brake pedal in this 1970 Laurentian. Those are not the typical brake and accelerator pedals that you would find in a 1970 Pontiac in the U.S., nor even in a 1970 Chevrolet. Those are holdover brake and accelerator pedals from the late 50s era that were used in Chevrolets that GM of Canada just kept using in Pontiacs. So you got old school style brake and accelerator pedals in this vehicle. One other Chevrolet item you can notice here is the column shift lever. That's not the standard U.S. Pontiac shift lever either. So you got a little bit of Chevrolet on the interior of your Pontiac, although you can see that the instrument panel is a Pontiac instrument panel. The seats are also not pure Chevrolet, but they do have a unique to Canada cloth for the Laurentian. And we'll take one last look under hood. Notice the Pontiac decal on the air cleaner that says Pontiac 454. That is a factory decal. That's what they look like, kind of like an Oldsmobile rocket logo, but Pontiac instead. And you can see here there's no power steering pump on this car, clearly no air conditioning, and there's not even power brakes for this vehicle. There's manual brakes. So this one is a Stretch Armstrong. Hope you're a bodybuilder to drive it around. It strangely has cruise control. You can see the transducer mounted to the fender well on the driver's side there. Apparently, the owner liked to take long trips, so the only frill that he paid for was that cruise control. Didn't want power steering or brakes, but wanted to be able to set the cruise and go on long trips. I actually had a chance to buy this car back when it was for sale, I want to say eight or nine years ago, and I believe the price was around 18000 I think it was in the high teens, maybe 20000 And I passed on it, kind of poo-pooed it. I think it was a bit higher mileage. But you can tell it's an overall nice original survivor condition. And it's one of those that I kind of wish I hadn't passed up because how often are you going to see a 1970 Pontiac with a 454 under hood? 
Oh, well, you can't buy them all. Let me know what you think about this cool 1970 Pontiac Laurentian in the comment section. And thanks again for watching.